Lift up your two hands, everybody, in a moment, and give God thanks. Again, thank God for answered prayers. Blessed be your name, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Whatever you stood thanking God for, returns with you as testimony. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big clap up. I'm pleased you may be seated. Every change that we experience in the kingdom is triggered by an encounter with the world. Every encounter with the world triggers a change of story. Every genuine encounter with the world triggers a change of story when applied. When applied. The world is helpless until we put it to work believing. By stripes you were healed, then talk strength, don't talk weakness. Talk health, don't talk sickness. Talk vigor, don't talk weariness. That means, think strength, don't think weakness. Think health, don't think sickness. Think vigor, don't think willingness. And then you qualified to live a healthy life. You are applying yourself to the demands of the world that you have received. We shall have whatsoever you say. So let him that is weak say, I'm sorry. Until you stop saying, I am sick, you won't stop being sick. Until you stop saying, I am weak, the weakness will keep multiplying. The more you say, the more it multiplies. It's important to learn the skill of word engagement. It's important. So you don't start presenting God as failing you. It's not enough to be a giver, you must be a cheerful giver. It's not enough to be a cheerful giver, you must also be you must also at the same time, be a loving giver. You're giving in love, not as a show off. If I offer my boy to be one, I have no charity, it profits me nothing. If you're a giver and you talk of poverty, it will erase and destroy your work of giving. So you talk abundance. To bring home your harvest. Why should God be angry with you and destroy the works of your hand? So it's all important. We need to get to the point where we know how to put the world in perspective and how to engage with the world to generate results. In the name of Jesus, this will be your most fulfilling year till date. <laughs> Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. In 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes Jacob exclaimed, God has been here and I knew it not. Let me give you some glimpse to the prophetic word concerning this church family called Winner's Family. The Lord spoke to me saying, Raise me, these people I have committed into your hands. So you are here for training for change of levels. Raise me, these people. Come and say, I'm rising. He said, These people. God has been here, and I knew it not. Let me give you some glimpse to the prophetic word concerning this church family called Winner's Family. The Lord spoke to me saying, Raise me these people I have committed into your hands. So you are here for training for change of levels. Raise me these people. Come and say, I'm rising. He said to me, this is 21 December 1995, put brighter light into them, impart greater life into them, release them into their destinies, provoke their potentials, school them into exploits. Now, that indicates that everyone here is a potential man and woman of exploits. That includes you. Exploit connotes extraordinary accomplishment. Things never seen before. Out of this world, order of accomplishment. We have seen a strange thing today. We have never seen it in this fashion. Now, that is the training God brought you here for. And in the name of Jesus, before this year is over, it will be clear you have registered in the School of Exploit. Now hear God saying, for I have determined, that's Jesus speaking, to raise unto myself revolutionaries who shall once again turn the world upside down as in the days of the Acts of the Apostles. I have determined, that's Jesus speaking, to raise me revolutionaries who will change the course of events in the world. Who will change what? The course of events in the world. Now, wait a minute. People will rise from this commission who will be known as largest employers of labor. It won't be one, it won't be two, it won't be three, it won't be four. The highest concentration of giants in human history will rise from here. Yeah. If you believe you are part of that, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Anybody fits in. David was 17, Abraham was 75, Jake Moses was 80. They stepped into a new dawn in their respective ages. So it covers everybody. It covers 17, it covers 75, it covers 80. Amen. So we are covered. Divine ideas will be dropping. Paving the way forward for ordinary people. School them into exploits. Tell them no matter what age they are in, they can still step into a new dawn of exploits. 
Amen. Amen. For I have determined. That's Jesus speaking. So, there is the rise of an army of revolutionaries who will change the course of events in this world. If you are one of them, let me hear your loudness. Amen. I wasn't praying for this. It just came down and unzipped it. Enlarge their capacity for excellence. Position them effectively in the covenant because that is the gateway to this event. Position them effectively in the covenant. Show them what they must do for these things to happen. Position them effectively in the covenant. Show them they are part of the deal. I have chosen this place as my end time Jerusalem from where the gospel shall sound to the regions beyond. Come on, give the Lord a big clap. So, you are in a family of exploits. Nobody here will be struggling for survival. Many destinies will find many through you. Then on 15th July 1996, he said, build with me a people to be envied, a people of attraction, a people of honor, and by them I will storm the world. It means world shakers are here. That things will be happening at that corner where you are that will be shaking the world in your field. Say, and by them I will storm the world. I will storm the world. Now I never read that from any book in my life. A people to be envied. No one shall be pitied anymore in this commission. Whatever makes men pity you will be turned to a testimony of envy. A people of attraction, glowing life that will make the unsaved, ten of them, go to your scarcity and will go with you. A people of honor. Look at those words used to describe you. That's what God has packaged for you in this family. I have given you the people, now build them with me. Give them purpose impart vision to them. School them into exploits. Repeated. Release them to their destinies. Walk with me, my son. Walk with me, my son, as I raise a new generation of saints by your hand. Maintain a strong focus on the commission. Behold, I'm with you. Now, a new generation of believers. There has never been a kind of them. Neither would there be any after them, like unto them, unto the years of many generations. I tell you something. That's you. That is your picture from God. 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 Yeah. Remember, to enter into that, position them effectively in the covenant. Let them understand what I require of them for them to walk in the reality of these things. Please understand. God 
never lies. This makes this church a new dawn church. I mean, this commission is a new dawn commission. Things that eyes have not seen nor ears heard, they are ordained to become the order of the day in the life of every winner. And this year shall be your flag off into that era. This year shall be your flag off into that era. This year shall be your flag off into that era. Now, let me show you a, a little picture of the new dawn order of testimonies of this church. Now, building this facility, I mean, I, I call them humbling testimonies. Now, let me show you a, a little picture of the new dawn order of testimonies of this church. Now, building this facility, I mean, I, I call them humbling testimonies, which I may not have seen or he has had. Maybe somewhere, but we haven't seen it. Building a 50,000 seat sanctuary in one year, not a bachelor, but a solid engineering structure. Without a budget, without borrowing, perhaps I have never seen it. Wait a minute. The events of your life as you connect with the covenant I'll be showing you in a few minutes, will be after the same order. We run a January to December budget in our church. Now, the commandment to build this church came in, June, in September, so it wasn't part of the budget. And it was going to deliver the following September. It will have to wait till January before we can enter our budget. So he used his budget to run it. And he delivered it clean. Give the Lord praise. Now, Secondly, we saw this new Don God in this new Don Commission doing things that eyes have not seen and things that ears may not have heard. Bought himself an aircraft within six months of declaration, not in the budget. It's time to get the aircraft. He said that March 26, it landed. September 17th, the same year, without consulting with any bank, without calling any member on this earth or in heaven on phone, without begging, without borrowing, without any foreign input, he bought it cash. Can I hear your loudest for me? Now, announced only once and no reminder. And not announced on Sunday, announced on a Saturday. Things that eyes have not seen, they shall be the order of the day in your life from now. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Number three. A mission in Africa building two imagine world class universities. Under 10 years apart, under 10 years apart, without any traceable stress, maybe eyes may not have seen that before. Maybe eyes may not have heard that before, but he did it. Now, we were all watching. Nobody was carrying any luggage. I wasn't carrying no luggage. We were all watching Jesus doing it. Hallelujah. Now you have entered your watching realm. Amen. Where you'll be watching Jesus doing the seemingly impossible in your life. Amen. 
Sister Mary. Because you are in need, it may look ordinary to you because you are in need. It may look like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's what happens in our church. But these are strange things. What are they? They are strange things. And they will be the order of happiness in your life from henceforth. Now, one Sunday, 108,000 souls enter this church above the previous Sunday. 108,000. October 25, 2015. 108,000. Maybe I may not have seen that before, but he made us to see it by grace. Now, I'm trying to help you to see the family to which you belong. From this time on, as you align with the covenant demands as contained in scriptures, this shall become the order of happiness in your life. Now, for two years running, we've had over a million people in our home mission station at Shiloh. Not Lagos, not the satellite view centers in Lagos, not Canaan land. Over a million people sitting down in our various churches on live transmission at Shiloh. One million. Minus Canaan land, the base of Shiloh, minus the view centers in Lagos. There are things that if you are not there, you will be in doubt. Can that be true? Yes, it is the true truth. And the doing of the Lord. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Now, we have never borrowed 37 years running. We have never begged. We have no identified sponsors that these are the men of this city. No bank overdraft, yet no lack. Give the Lord praise. Now, take on this. No breakdown of peace for once. No crisis to manage. When we were 20, no crisis. We were 100, no crisis. We were 1,000, no crisis. We became 10,000, no crisis. We grew to become 100,000, no crisis. From this day on, your entire life shall be void of crisis for life. All these are pointed to the new dawn features of this church. And that makes you a new dawn member of this family. And so whatever new dawn implies, that becomes your continuous experience from now. Somebody believe that, let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Can I hear you say with me, the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. Surely I have a goodly heritage. Surely I have a goodly heritage. The book of Psalms chapter 16 and verse 6, he said the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. Surely I have a goodly heritage. Why am I saying that? Like begets like. Is the law of creation. Everything produces after its kind. 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 
chapter 1 of um, Genesis, verse 11, verse 24, 25, after his kind, after his kind, you belong to a new dawn family. From today, you'll be manifesting after your kind. Yeah. Let me hear your deep-seated amen. Yeah. Let me hear your full assurance of faith. Amen. So new dawn is your heritage in Christ and it's your heritage, manifested heritage in this commission. Amen. Manifested heritage in this commission. Amen. Manifested heritage in this commission. Suddenly, your church at the corner of a corner has been recognized as the largest in congregation in the world. At the corner of a corner. No matter where you are now, this new dawn grace will locate you. This new dawn grace will locate you. This new dawn grace will locate your business. This new dawn grace will locate your career. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, what is the covenant that empowers your access into this new dawn heritage? Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made him serve of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a son, Found. and being found in, and was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore God has also highly exalted him Give him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every name should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and of things on that the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He took all the realms of existence, the heavens, the earth, and on the earth. How did he get there? He made himself of no reputation. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. He made himself of no reputation. He took upon him the form of a servant. I am in your midst as one that serves. Luke 22, 25 to 27. He humbled himself. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that in due time he may exalt you. God resists the proud. He giveth more grace to the humble. And we can only be anything by grace. He humbled himself unto death. Even the death of the cross. Made themselves no opposition, mean, no self respect. You don't know me. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> he made himself of no reputation. No. He stayed small in his eyes. Yes, 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 yes. He remained small in his eyes. Yes. 
So two of them are attitudinal. One is active. He put upon himself the form of a servant. Made himself of no reputation, humbled himself unto death. Praise God. Hallelujah. And served his way to the end. Even on the cross, he said to that thief, you made me in paradise today. Amen. Amen. You made me in paradise. His name shall be called Jesus because he shall save his people from their sin. He looked at that man and said unto him, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He served to the end. One thing. One thing. They were going to make, make him king. He fled. Yes. One thing. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I to the world that may be a witness to the truth. That may be a witness to the truth. So he stayed on to the end. Luke 18 37. For to this end was I born. And for this cause came I to the world that I may be a witness to the truth. That I may be a witness. He came as a witness. He lived and died as a witness. He wit the last thing he did was to witness. He served to the end. He served to the end. That is the you will have the terms of the covenant that guarantees our access into this new dawn world. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Your life will be springing surprises. Yeah. Year in, year out. Yeah. Everybody will know there is something unique about you. Yeah. That is what differentiates believers one from another. Understanding the terms of the covenant. And please understand, no matter what area of life you belong, serving God in truth and in deed is one major way to experience supernatural change of levels in the adventures of life. Serving God. And not because. As long as you are out of service, you are no longer eligible for promotion. Out of service, you are no longer eligible for change of level. No matter how active you are when you are in service, when you step out of service, no more change of level. No more change of level. No more change of level. So this new dawn demands that you and I remain actively in service. Remain what? It demands that we remain actively in service. Faithfully in service. Fruitfully in service. Profitably in service. Value-adding service. If you retire from the police as ASP, that's your rank. They won't say commission of police retire, it is ASP. ASP retired. That is your change of level ends when you are out of service. Your change of rank ends when you are out of service. So there are many retired believers. No more, nothing is changing anymore. Nothing is changing anymore. They have fully retired. All they have not done is to put RTD in their name. <laughs> they are fully retired. Fully retired. If you retire as a lieutenant colonel in the army, till you die, it will be lieutenant colonel retired. Yes. Even the boys you train who are now generous. That doesn't make you change level. No. You have left service. Your level can't change anymore. Mm. Understand this demand of the new dawn covenant. Mm. 
is a demand to remain actively, productively, fruitfully, profitably in service. Is that illustration clear? If you retire as an assistant manager in a company, that's your end there. If the right assistant manager retire, that's where you are. They can't now call you empty because you retired 15 years ago. No, no, no. You are no longer, you can't have any allowances. You can't have any, you have left. You have left. Now, grace never to drop off service. Receive it now. Can I tell you this? Your level will never stop changing as long as you remain in service. I said your level will never stop changing as long as you remain in service. Put your right hand on your chest and begin to attract grace that empowers men to remain in service. Now, lift up your eyes to Jesus and say, Jesus, engrace me to remain actively in service until the end of my journey. Engrace me to remain actively in service all the days of my life. Engrace me to remain actively in service. And grace me to remain actively in service all the days of my life. He said, even in old age, it shall still bring forth fruit. It shall still be fruitful, profitable, adding value. Help me, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Yeah. One area that is an open opportunity for stewardship is prayers. What do I call it? Yeah. Anna was serving God at 84 with prayers and fasting daily. Luke 2, 37. When we ask, how many people came here without anybody inviting them, you see their hands. Now, it is our prayer that drafted them. What drafted them? <laughs> it, it's not that you just wonder here. Father, every unsafe person across our harvest feet, whistle to them, whistle to them, and let them come with speed, swiftly. That's what brought you. Don't tell me nobody called you. We prayed you. Somebody prayed you. Somebody prayed you to arrive here. No, there is no child of God that was not born of a travail. The rush can amarata. So don't stand on side. Thank God nobody brought me. We brought you. We brought you as I prayed in tongues. My prayer went to your street and hit your head. And then you're your way running. Praise God. Somebody gave a you do a track. He prayed you. Father, everybody I gave a track to today, including the one who tore it. Wherever he is or she is, now draw them. Draw them. He has sent an angel. The angel just grabbed you. I need the money. You dress up. Can you do Winners. <laughs> you straight here. It is our prayer that brought you for Jesus to save you. How did he drop here? Before she traveled, she brought forth. Who has had such a thing? But as soon as Zion traveled, we are going to bath multitudes from the prayer altar this year. It's our prayer 
last I brought you nothing else. The day my father got saved was a very humorous day. He woke up, woke up early in the morning and came to the house at five o'clock and knocked the door. What is happening? He said, I just understood what you have been saying. I said, hey. <laughs> and just drop like that for Jesus. For Jesus. The kind of salvation you have never seen, you will see this year. From the prayer altar. From the prayer altar. <laughs> Somebody led a woman to Christ and the woman and told the woman by the spirit of the Lord that will soon start to be a in your house. He said, never. My husband is an ardent Muslim. He said, relax. He took the man to prayer for three days. Amen. Yes. The man dropped straight. The whole family is in church today. Bath in prayer. Bath in prayer. In the name of Jesus. God told me that this will be a year of noiseless breakthrough yes. in church growth. Amen. Noiseless breakthrough. Then once you run around town, yet they see multi coming. Now, this is what will happen all over the world. Listen to me. Between February 5 and May 6, 2018, every living winner must make a list of 12 names that they want to bath in the labor room of prayer. 12 names. It could be families. That you just take a whole family and wrestle them out of darkness into light. Twelve. How many? You believe God for twelve only. Twelve only. Let me tell you how God responds to kingdom enlightenment prayer. Humorous. Humorous. I said, Jesus, one time last year, give me a thousand souls this month. Wait a minute. God is too fast at this thing. So, <laughs> the following month, I said, Jesus, give me a thousand this week. Jesus did it. A thousand this week. Now you are going to stay three months. Just, just 12. For twelve. <laughs> I mean, for twelve. Twelve. Twelve only. For three months, twelve only. 12 abiding souls, the ones who put on your back and carry to church. If you don't have a goal, you never score one. Work is your opportunity. Many will bath a hundred from the prayer altar. Your combats will be having combat before the 6th of May. Without a noise, we will reap the harvest of our Amen. harvest field. Amen. Without a noise. So let's get down to work. Yes, we have our prayers. They are all there. But identify 12 people. Now if 12 will abide, then identify more than 12. And pray them in. And take advantage of the third Sunday, our Operation Andrew Sunday, which is our anointing service, and invite them. Hello, we have a special monthly anointing service tomorrow or next Sunday. It's always a time of strange encounters. You learn two, three testimonies. I'll be glad to pick you up on my way. Oh, I'll come by myself. No, it's better we drive together. So you won't miss the road, you know, particularly where to park when we get here. No, just engage with Jesus. It is project by project that kept changing my level. Stay active in service. Stay active in service. Now, the moment God is asking you to bring 12, and you bring 24, you have touched his heart to do twice what he wanted to do before for you. So wake up. 
and let's together partner with Jesus to rescue souls from hell because they don't belong there. Can I hear your amen? Now give the Lord praise everybody. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Why are we praying? Are you still up? The greatest headache of the past of darkness is the growth and expansion of the church because the church is the light of the world. How many know why we are praying now? The larger the church, the weaker the past of darkness. The larger this church, the weaker the past of darkness. You never feel the taste of salt in a soup except it's enough. Except it's enough. We can only stop this world from decaying by the salt of the earth becoming enough. Now, I must tell you this, and I'm saying this to the glory of God. The reason why the enemy could not have his way in Nigeria is because of the size of the church of Jesus. Amen. The light is too intense. The darkness had a problem maneuvering. Almost every church in this country is in the fast now. Almost every church in this country is in the fast now. And the sheer size of the church yes. compared to where we were 20 years ago. It's intimidating. Yes. It's what? The church has all the capacity to determine the events of this nation. Yes, yes. sir. Oh, the capacity. And I'm telling you this truth. There is spiritual authority. There is number authority. Yes. yes. What do I call it? Number authority. And government runs on number. Democracy runs on number. Yes, sir. The number alone is intimidating. Yes. So much. Now, the spiritual authority on top of it. That's more terrible. When this church starts to pray on one thing, no devil here can stop it. For instance, there shall be no war in Nigeria. I said, there shall be no war in Nigeria. There shall be no more bloodshed. All the manipulations of Fulani Hearts men by whosoever is behind it, they are already down. Amen. Judgment is tormenting them. Amen. They cannot sleep. Oh. Amen. They know we have this service, so they are watching. They can't sleep. Amen. And neither will you sleep again. Everybody behind the killings of the innocent. No more sleep for you. Everybody sponsoring the killings of the innocent. No more rest for you. You have made many mothers childless. You also be childless. Yeah. Everyone manipulating the destiny of Nigeria for destruction. They are declared destroyed. Yeah. That's the kind of church we have. Not the kind you be praying for your enemies. No, no, no. We pray against our enemies here. <laughs> Praise God. He said, any tongue that shall be in judgment, you shall condemn. Yeah. Not that you shall pray for, you shall condemn. You shall condemn. You know what David said? I hate them that hate you with perfect hatred. Perfect anybody that hates peace should not be embraced. Thank you, Jesus. Why are we praying? The forces holding mankind down in captivity needs to be broken. They can only be broken on the prayer water. Luke 21, Luke 11, 21 and 22. When a strong man armed, keepeth his palace, his goods are safe at, at peace. But when he's stronger than he shall call upon him, he will take away the arms in which he trusts and then divide the spoils. Everyone captive across our harvest field shall be delivered this time. 
give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Whatever can stop the church from praying can't stop the church from growing. This church won't stop praying, and this church won't stop growing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stand to your feet, everybody. I'd like you to profess and proclaim along with me, I belong to a new dawn family. The winner's family. And because likes beget like, I'm a new dawn child of God. From henceforth, features of new dawn shall become the order of the day in my life. I shall be going from level to level because the path of the justified is as a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. Jesus, thank you for bringing me into this family. Amen. Lift up your two hands, everybody. And receive grace to take responsibility. Grace to walk in the covenant. Grace to make myself of no reputation. Grace to be obedient unto death. Grace to humble myself. I receive it from you. Grace to serve you all through my life. To keep producing fruit. I receive it. Lift up your two hands, everybody. Lift up your two hands. 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 Begin to take that grace. 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 Begin to receive that grace. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The word says, covet honestly the best gifts. Covet honestly. You'll find anything you need in the life of anyone. He said, covet it honestly. Covet it what? I saw God's prosperity on the Copeland. I wanted it. I don't want any management. I don't want trying to find out from somebody who doesn't know it. I went after those I could see the proofs in their life. And I got it. I saw depth and stress-free faith in Kenneth Egan. I went after him. I said, Jesus, I want it. I want it. I've seen people sweating and struggling. This man doesn't sweat. He doesn't struggle. I want it. Covet honestly the best gifts. Whatever oil flows on the head of your Aaron is your entitlement if you so desire. He said, flows from the head of Aaron down his beard and to his garment and to his food. You are entitled to any grace that flows on your prophet. You are entitled to any grace that flows on your prophet. I go out with my team. My team includes my driver. My team includes my security man. They form my team in my outreaches. We go to marketplaces, rice market, biscuit market. We go by the roadside. He made himself of no reputation. 
He humbled himself to obey God. God says to do it. Who are you? Who made you who you are? How did you get there? Who dashed monkey banana? He made himself of no reputation. Yet the world says, this is the richest pastor in the world. And, but he made himself of no reputation. Now, listen to me. He became obedient. If God says so, that's what to do. We came to this place by obedience. It's not a good place in court. It's an offside. You know, when you are playing football, they say it's offside. It's, a, it's an offside. But obedience brought us here. See what obedience has done. See what obedience has done. Now, I like you to receive grace of making yourself of no reputation, putting upon yourself the form of a servant, and humbling yourself before the hand, the, the hand of God. Take that grace if you want to come on, go ahead and take it. Take that grace. Take that grace now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. No explanation is tenable for disobedience. Take it now. To see what you have never seen, you might be willing to do what you have never done. Now, take it now. 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 Now, grace to serve him to the end. Grace to serve him to the end. Grace to serve him to the end. Grace to bear fruits to the end. Grace to stay in active service to the end. Now, take it. Now 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 take it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now can I tell you why I call it grace? I've never needed any encouragement to serve. Neither has anybody's abuse retarded me. No mockery has imparted on me today. See what is happening. Now, that grace is released upon your life today. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. He humbled himself. We have got God has also highly exalted him. You find yourself in places this year that you least imagine in your thinking. God once told me there's a place for you on top if you're interested. And I said, I'm interested. Said, then whatever I tell you to do, do it. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. Now you are going to pray. The Lord by the sixth of May. Now you can pray that prayer with all your heart. Last year, the Lord Jesus gave my team and I 9,400 standing members in this church. 9,400 in one year. In one year. Now, Jesus, between now and May 6, help me to bath minimum 12 souls into your kingdom and this church. Go ahead and pray. Help me to bath. Help me to bath. Anybody that must give birth must go to the labor room. You can't give birth without going to the labor room. You can't send somebody to go there. You can't send someone to go there for you. You have to go to the labor room to give birth. It is the labor room of prayer. Oh Lord, I believe you for 12 standing souls in this church. Pray for that church where you are. Pray for the church where you are. I believe you, Jesus, for 12 standing souls by the 5th, the 6th of May, 2018, in this church. 12 abiding souls, 12 established souls. I believe you for it in the name of Jesus. 
12 souls to present before your throne on the 6th of May. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Can I tell you this? Many will jump levels this year. Many Josephs will arrive here, arise here this year. You'll not only be free from prison, you'll be ruling in the land. That dying business will soon be turned to the envy of this nation. That struggling career will soon make you a major employer of labor. In the name of Jesus, this season marks the end of the torment and torture of sickness in your life. Remember, we get healed by faith, we stay healthy by service. We get healed by faith, and we stay healthy by service. After I hear them, I say, go and tell your friends all that Jesus has done for you. Go, go and serve so you don't get sick again. Amen. We stay healthy by service. Now in the name of Jesus, your health will never go down again. Every prophetic word that has come your way ever since this fasting season began shall find speedy fulfillment in your life. Yeah. Choir, let us praise him because he's a good God. I may not have been visited tonight. I may not have had an encounter tonight. Say with me, as long as I'm in service, I won't stop changing levels. As long as I'm in service, my new dawn features shall not cease manifesting. I have received grace to stay actively in service all the days of my life. The prayer altar is an open field for every believer. I take advantage of it to remain productively in service all the days of my life. Praying church growth prayers, praying for needs of members, praying for souls to be bathed into the kingdom, nurturing them to establishment. I receive that grace. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody give the Lord a big, big hand of praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever God was yesterday, He is today. And 